Hello viewers, welcome to another edition of Business PNG. We hope you've had a wonderful Independence Weekend. In this edition, we feature the PNG Advantage 2013 International Investment Summit. Given that Papua New Guinea has vast natural resources, many business opportunities are expected to grow in various sectors of the economy. Due to the resource boom in the country, and with government opting to strengthen renewable sectors of the economy, there are even more opportunities expected. The PNG Advantage 2013 International Investment Summit provided the opportunity for PNG business executives to engage with local and international investors to identify the business opportunities available. The third Papua New Guinea Advantage International Investment Summit was held on the 9th and 10th of September at the Gateway Hotel in Port Moresby. The two-day summit saw Papua New Guinean business executives and local investors engaging promisingly with international investors. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, in launching the summit, reassured international investors that PNG provides a conducive environment to invest in. I want to give you today an unqualified assurance that not as our political environment has never been more stable or more certain than it is today, but that stability is and will continue as far as we can see into the future. Our government today is the largest parliamentary majority in our country. The Prime Minister also launched the PNG Investors Manual, a handbook for investing and doing business in the country. The manual was co-published by the Port Moresby Chamber of Commerce and Industry, IPA, and the Asian Development Bank. NCD Governor Poes Pakop told summit participants that the crime rate in the capital has dropped in comparison to past years. Governor Pakop also said with recent developments around the city that Port Moresby is open for business. But I want to assure you all that Port Moresby is changing, Papua New Guinea is changing. We have, over the last five years, managed to reduce opportunity crime by 60%. But mostly it's not what it used to be or what some of you, or, uh, the media, may have been saying in the past. Today, I can uh, assure you that it's relatively safe to do business and on a personal security level. Tim Harcourt from Australia, known as the airport economist because of the amount of time he spends in the air, presented a view on where the world economy is travelling. Mr Harcourt is the first J.W. Neville Fellow in Economics at the Australian School of Business at the University of New South Wales in Australia. He was also, for over a decade, the first Chief Economist of the Australian Trade Commission, Austrade. A prolific author and globetrotter, Harcourt has visited over 56 countries in the past five years alone. In his presentation, the internationally renowned economist said PNG has got opportunities to grow its economy. What people tend to do is they jump on they jump on fads, and what it, what it misses out is that beneath uh, a fall in commodity prices, you've already built up an incredible services sector around it. Mr. Harcourt also said PNG has a younger population compared to many other countries in the Asia Pacific region, thus having an advantage to move its economy forward. Stay tuned. More on the summit when we come back. There are currently concerns on the low trading of PNG's export mineral commodities. The O'Neill Dion government plans to develop economic hubs in the country, including agriculture and tourism centres. Is this the way forward for our country's economy? Let's find out. The summit looked at the business opportunities available in PNG apart from the resource sector. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill said there are plans in place to implement infrastructure developments to build and strengthen economic hubs in the country. Recently, I outlined the government's plan to create a number of economic hubs added to our existing major centres of Port Mosby and Leigh together with Mount Hagen. In addition, we have identified Kokopo as the major tourism hub. Bank of PNG Governor Loy Bakani briefed the summit of PNG's economic status and plans for the future. You cannot rely on the mineral sector all the time. We have to start to diversify the economy and 
focus put uh, focus on uh, non mineral especially agriculture and it's positive it's a uh, very uh, good news that the uh, government is now looking at tourism also in support of agriculture sector to sustain the growth in the economy in the, into the future minister for public enterprises and state investment ben maika when delivering his address at the summit, encouraged private investors to partner with state-owned enterprises to ensure wider and effective service delivery in Papua New Guinea. So my policy document will now begin to define a new partnership that I believe will enable us to uh, uh, go beyond the current uh, uh, regimes uh, that uh, we now uh, enjoy in the, in, the, in the resource sector. So there will be uh, some discussions that uh, uh, will require your input because we will circulate this document as soon as, soon as Cabinet approves it and then you can make some, some, some of your comments. Minister Micah also highlighted that a document has been prepared which encourages a level playing field for public-private partnerships. However, Minister Micah said the document has to be approved by Cabinet before it can be distributed to the business community and other stakeholders. So the word is partnership. I believe that if there is a partnership that is based on trust, a partnership that is based on long-term commitment, we must be committed to you, and you and your investors must be committed to us. And why should we be committed to each other? Because we must be committed to transforming this country. Renowned Australian economist Tim Harcourt said PNG has opportunities in other sectors apart from the resource sector. He said this in response to concerns raised regarding low trading of PNG's export mineral prices. In the political debate in Australia, certainly it almost seems that some people are trying to push the end of the mining boom uh, as a great catastrophe for Australia and, and, and for PNG. I, I think it misses out two things. One is the long-term nature of uh, commodity cycles. The other thing that misses out is um, the contribution that mining makes to other sectors in the economy and the types of human capital you build around mining booms. Up next, we take a look at business opportunities available through infrastructure developments. If you've just joined us, you're watching Business PNG. Infrastructural development is seen by many as vital for PNG's growth, given unreliable service delivery in some sectors of the economy. The PNG government needs the help of both local and overseas investors to contribute in enabling efficient and affordable services to the people of Papua New Guinea. Speakers at the summit touched on developing infrastructure for various sectors in PNG's economy. Let's find out what opportunities are available through these developments. Representatives from the government and the private sectors shared their views of the opportunities available in developing infrastructure in PNG. The energy sector was pointed out by many of the speakers at the summit, urging for it to be enhanced in order for reliable electricity to be provided in Papua New Guinea. Minister for Public Enterprises and State Investment, Ben Maika, told the summit that the proposed Purari River hydropower project is very important for Papua New Guinea's future. This is a project that we want to target as the provider of cheap, reliable, and long-term sustainable power. And we believe that it will give no excuse to the government and to investors to use this available cheap and large quantity of power to downstream process a lot of the nation's raw material onshore in this country. PNG Power CEO John Tangit said PNG Power invited independent power producers to enter the energy market to enable reliable electricity in the country. PNG Power has embarked on the process of uh, contracting uh, independent power producers to provide private generating facilities to augment its existing generation infrastructure. Funding agencies such as the International Finance Corporation and the Asian Development Bank also expressed concern in assisting to develop infrastructure in the energy sector in PNG based on their experiences from past projects in other countries. 
power, for example, in PNG, I was reading up that its access to power is limited to 10% of the population. And uh, that's really a very stark number because power is not just in terms of light shining, it also has a big influence in terms of healthcare, education, pump, being able to pump water. Government of PNG itself has a target uh, by 2030 uh, to have 70% of electrification reaching out. Um, so that means requiring additional about 2,000 megawatt of electricity. It's a huge amount of work to be done. Other sectors such as telecommunications, water and education were also covered. An attendee of the summit, James Gore, shared his views regarding the summit. For me, it's, uh, it's my first time to attend this summit, and uh, I'm very pleased to be here. Um, the, the last two days, uh, and, and today as well, um, the speakers have been talking about uh, you know, the great opportunities that are out there for investing, where the focus should be, uh, how, the, how the country should be diversifying um, investments and, and so forth. And also, you know, they're pointing out opportunities where Papua New Guinea businesses can uh, partner with, uh, you know, investors from offshore to tap into some of those uh, opportunities, and uh, and and also for uh, small service providers like uh, like the organisation that I'm part of, uh, 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 Gore Accountants and Business Advisors. Uh, we uh, facilitate, uh, uh, you know, um, the entry of uh, international uh, investors. So, so it's a good opportunity also to network with the investors from also, um, and you know, the CEOs of uh, established businesses here in PNG and uh, fellow entrepreneurs. The summit was dedicated entirely to the promotion of business and investment in PNG. There are many business opportunities in PNG, both for local and international investments. This raises the challenge for many Papua New Guineans to maximize their potential and use these opportunities to their advantage for both personal and national development. Stay tuned. When we come back, we speak to Andrew Wilkins of Business Advantage International. Welcome back. Minister for Public Enterprises and State Investment, Ben Micah, said during the summit that PNG's tag of being referred to as the land of the unexpected should be done away with and changed to the land of advantage. With this, he commended the summit organizers for having the event called as the PNG Advantage 2013 International Investment Summit. Let's now join Anya Reno as she speaks with Publishing Director for Business Advantage International, Andrew Wilkins. Good to see you again, Andrew. Good to be here. Now, in light of all the presentations uh, at that, has, that have been given at uh, this year's PNG Advantage Investment Summit, what do you think about the current state of um, investment confidence or investor confidence in the PNG economy? Yeah. Well, I think what excites me most about hearing the variety of speakers that we have at this event is that when people outside of PNG think of PNG, they think of resources. They think of gold and copper and gas, and that's primarily what they think that's about. That's right. But what this summit has demonstrated in a, in a very, very concrete way is that the opportunities to do business in PNG are right across the economy. We had, for example, um, uh, uh, Mark Baker from ANZ talking mm -hmm. about how bullish she was about some areas of agribusiness such as palm oil. Um, uh, Andrew McGrath from NASFUN talking about how bullish she was about agribusiness as mm -hmm. well. Um, and not just agribusiness but the growth in services. We had uh, Frank Kramer today talking about not just engineering but a growth of professional services in PNG and how that's going. But uh, also tuna, the fisheries sector is really developing very strongly. We had a presentation yesterday from Pete Telso from RD Tuna Canners in Medang, right. um, who are a major, major employer in PNG. Mm. And the fishery sector is really exploding on the northern coast. So for me, it's really about the variety of opportunities. And I think generally people are saying that, that because PNG is going to be in the future less reliant on a single sector, that's got to be good for employment. It's got to be good for the resilience of the economy. Um, given that we can't rely on non-renewable 
resources to fuel the economy forever. Mm. And that is right. We must become um, not so dependent on the, uh, the resource sector. And would you say that that's the biggest uh, difference between last year's summit and this summit, that you've got a lot more opportunities being spoken about this year? Well, one of the themes of this year's conference was, a, was talking about the next 10 years in PNG and now that we are a LNG producing nation, now the PNG is an LNG producing nation. 2014, next year, the gas from the PNG LNG project will flow and that's going to change the economy forever. Mm. Yeah. But the opportunities of the last 10 years, as far as PNG's growth are concerned, are going to be different for the next 10 years. And we have to recalibrate business, if you like, change the game yes. to take advantage of the opportunities. Yes. So there is still going to be a lot of reliance and resources. That's not to say it's not going to be important. But the great thing is that the income from the LNG project and other resources projects will enable PNG to really diversify and to invest in sectors that hitherto have been lacking in investment, like infrastructure. Mm. We heard today a lot about um, the opportunities in power generation, for example, where the private sector is really getting involved for the first time in the last couple of years in actually generating uh, electricity to supply the grid, uh, mm. to selling power to um, PNG Power, uh, and also opportunities in port development and roads. All these are areas where there's finally money being spent. We even had Shay Scavell from the Manufacturers Council saying that there's now finally enough money in roads being spent. Obviously, the challenge is to spend it properly, that's right. and that's always a, 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 a very important thing to be managed. But at least now there's funds coming through, and these improvements in infrastructure, infrastructure are going to enable a whole lot more business to occur mm. in PNG. So the outlook is very positive. It is. It is, it is a out, uh, positive outlook. Uh, what role uh, do you think this summit, the PNG Advantage Investment Summit, plays in encouraging that investor confidence? Mm. Well, I think it was great to see the Prime Minister uh, and the Governor of, uh, of NCD Powers Park up there in the morning yesterday and this morning, uh, Ben Micah, the Minister for Public Enterprise, mm -hmm. treating this event as an important part of the investment calendar. When we sat down with the Port Moresby Chamber of Commerce and Industry and devised this event, we work in partnership with them on this event, um, we, were very, we felt it was really important that Papua New Guinea have an investment summit for PNG in PNG. Mm -hmm because you know the time, it's a real sign of maturity of an economy when it can support its own investment event. Yes. There's enough people in the country who want to go and there's enough people who want to visit the country to make it work. And we've now demonstrated that. Uh, the next stage, I think, is to market this event more broadly overseas, to say to potential investors, whether they're in Australia or New Zealand or further afield in Europe or in Asia, that this is the place to come to if you want to learn about PNG, if you want to make the contacts with the right people. The number of, uh, for me, what was most gratifying was the number of chief executives in the room. Mm. Uh, the calibre of delegate is very high. Yes. You're getting the decision makers coming along. And as a result, um, this is becoming the place to come to if you want to work with PNG companies. So it looks very positive. I'm delighted that we've been able to achieve this. This is against the background uh, of my own company, Business Advantage International. We've been working now in PNG since 2006. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the goals was to raise PNG's profile internationally. When we started, you could Google PNG and business, those two terms on Google, and who knows what and you might come <laughs> up with, you know? Some very odd things. Now when you do, you go to Business Advantage PNG, which is our business news website, or you go to MTV's excellent Business PNG mm -hmm. website, or, and a whole lot of extra resources now that make PNG an easier country to visit, an easier country to do business, uh, an easier country if you are an overseas investor to navigate, to work out who's who, mm -hmm. to work out the things you need to do to do business here. So the job is never done. The thing about promoting countries it's a tough job, but it's also a competitive job yes. because there are other countries in the region who are also very organised mm. and have their own message to investors as well. But we really feel that we've started to get some headway, that PNG is now on the map and there are good resources for overseas investors, both this event mm. and also printed publications and online as well. So whatever, if people are interested in PNG, sooner or later they're going to come across our, our publications, our website, or this event and that will take them to the next stage.
I think to the quality or the caliber of people you're attracting, I, I note uh, Dr. John Hewson is here, uh, Tim Harcourt also attended, so I think, uh, I think we're all looking forward to next year's one. Well, the challenge is now to even do an even better event next That's year, right. and we're already starting to plan that. Excellent. Andrew Wilkins, thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. With 38 years of independence celebrated yesterday and the summit highlighting vast business opportunities, Papua New Guinea has great potential in truly becoming a land of advantage. And that winds up this edition of Business PNG. To access our programs online, log on to www.mtv.com.pg. Also, remember to send us your feedback via Facebook or email. We've also got our Twitter page up and running, so don't forget to follow us. Until then, I'm Denis Orere. Bye for now.